Good day, everybody. This is Gerard from GH Immigration Services here in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. I wanted to discuss something with you that I don't think a lot of people realize from overseas at this time. Um, I want to discuss owner-operated businesses. Now, with the pandemic going on the way it is right now, and um, we don't know how long this is going to last, and we know this has caused chaos throughout the whole world, and there's um, it's just crazy on the effect it has in the world on the world. And you do know at this time that things like in demand occupations and that do have priority coming to Canada and things like that. So those things most people are aware of at this time. But owner operated businesses is another area that is in high demand in Canada. And the reason for that, this uh, uh, or that or this, is because owner-operated businesses are basically the foundation of our country. Most businesses, the largest percentage of businesses in Canada are small businesses, and uh, they're owner-operated. So, uh, keeping that in mind, with the COVID going on right now, Canada's trying to get people back to work. That is the number one priority here in Canada. Now, we are slowly but surely opening up. Like we're we're open, but there are still. Uh, if this gets, if it like we are still having an increase in the uh, the virus, uh, the illnesses caused by the virus at this time. But uh, it's a little bit more controlled. We have a little bit uh, a better understanding of what's going on, and our healthcare system has and is adjusting to it. Uh, so that keeping that in mind. Keeping getting Canadians back to work now is the number one priority of our federal government. We can't afford to keep on continuing with the stimulus, pack, stimulus, stimulus packages that are going on. So with that, these owner-operated businesses that are available throughout Canada and that come up, these are the businesses that are going to help bring Canadians back to work. So I don't think there's been a time in Canada's immigration history when the opportunity of owner-operated and coming to Canada is, I wouldn't say simple, but is the most ideal. And um, Canada is really, really aggressively looking at getting Canadians back to work. So if you're looking at coming to Canada and you want to come to Canada and create new jobs when you come here, owner-operator is probably one of the Easiest, I, I can't say the word easiest. Easiest is a very deceiving word. Is probably the best opportunity to at this time. Absolutely the best at this time. So, and I'm talking about things like cleaning companies and uh, coffee shops or any kind of business that has to do with uh, getting Canadians, giving Canadians work. Now, there is a process, of course. You know, you need an LMIA to come to Canada. So it's you can always expect it. Now, the, let's go through some of the details that you need. First, you need an LMIA. And you need the capital to be able to do it. So there are businesses that are available around 50000 plus. Okay, $50,000 Canadian, that is, not U.S., Canadian dollars. So there are businesses that are available and always coming up that are $50,000 best that are owner-operated. So the ideal number is probably, well, the, a lot of the uh, provincial programs, it's 100, 200, 300,000, whatever the case is. But there are also opportunities in the $50,000 mark, plus all your, the fees, of course, your LMI fees and your, uh, the other fees that are required when it comes to Canada. Through the approval of an LMIA, you will look at their one to two years, whatever it happens to be. And during that process, you will uh, also be applying for your permanent residency. So basically, when your LMIA is finished, you are going to have your permanent residency as long as you meet the general guidelines of permanent residency at that point. And, um, uh, you know, health and um, no criminal background and the rest of the residency requirements. Uh, as an owner-operator, the CLB is much lower but you still do have a, a CLB requirement. Um, but it's still like it, it it's uh, a lot better for you. 
Now, when you buy getting into these companies, a lot of them, you may not have the skill or expertise in the area of the business, but you can come into it as a passive. You can hire a manager to do the position for you. You can have a manager and you're working passively in the background type thing while you pursue other things. But one thing you got to remember about owner operator, you have to live in Canada. You cannot own a business and be overseas. If you are not actively working in the business, you don't have any chance of getting your your permanent residency in that. If you do, it's usually done by uh, a crooked or a crooked individual that is trying to make, uh, to be able to get you here. And if you know anything about it, there was just a big case out, out west in uh, Alberta area um, where uh, an immigration consultant or a person that was holding himself out as an immigration consultant had been doing a whole bunch of occupancy and bit business uh, for people and everything else and they got caught. So all these people are losing, will lose their residency and lose their opportunity and a permanent residency in that because of this fake individual. So there, there's make sure that your immigration consultant that, or the person that you're dealing with or the immigration lawyer, make sure they are real, that they are registered to come for you to come to Canada. Anyways, so back to uh, what I was saying, you can do it passively or else you can actively work at it. So if you end up buying a business that you know, like being running the business actively and working in the business, um, will save you money of, as a manager, uh, having management and all that stuff. But it will um, also, you know the ins and outs of the business and you have a good foundation when it comes to running the business already in Canada. If you have business experience, you already understand the, the nuts and bolts of owning a business. Although owning a business in Canada is much different than owning a business in, say, uh, Africa or Pakistan or India or whatever. The, the foundation's different. There's a whole lot of different regulations. But a lot of the companies that, like, uh, uh, you go and purchase will help you with um, getting all, everything that you require to be able to know how to run a business here in Canada. They, they help you get your licenses. They help you get um, any courses that are to just be able to qualify to run a business in Canada, things like women's course or food handler certificates or things like that. They will help you um, with those things. They will give you, make sure that you realize that a lot of the companies, especially the ones I deal with, will help you with, um, uh, finding housing, a suitable housing for you and your family, things like that. So anyways, um, if you're the par primary par uh, caregiver in the family as well, you are going to be able to bring your family at the same time. And remember, when ta we're talking about family, we're talking about immediate family. We're talking about yourself and if you're married, your wife and your children. Now your children still have to be under 22 years of age to be considered a child. But uh, that is uh, a part of owning the business. They are allowed to come with you as well. The, the companies that you deal with, they try to find you the housing, but they also try to find places, locations where for schooling, depending on your children's age and so on and so forth when it comes to that. And you remember in Canada, uh, public education up to the grade, up to grade 12 does not come out of pocket unless you're sending them to private schools. That is par, par, um, uh, a basic basic in Canada. We believe that education is so important here that um, you don't have to pay to bring have your kid to go to school. That's, you know, uh, post-secondary, like university and that, yes, you have to pay for. But when it comes to up to grade 12, kindergarten to grade 12, that's all a part of the structure of our, our Canadian economy. So anyways, next is uh, like a timeline. If you get involved in by purchasing a business and that, after you have made the arrangement of and um, the process of that, you're looking at probably minimal six months uh, at coming here. So if you think it's gonna you're gonna end up coming here in two months or three months, not likely. It's probably going to be around a six month process because there's so many hoops to jump through. It's not just a matter of from the minute you contact somebody 
you have to go through all, you have to get through all the regulations, the Canadian regulations, you have to get your upgrades, you have to do the LMIA. And sometimes LMIAs are very fast, sometimes they're not so fast. You know, uh, if you go on, um, they are very much in demand right now and uh, the Canadian government is processing LMIAs in all different areas very, very quickly. So it's good or bad. So what would you um, uh, also know, the businesses can be anywhere in Canada. I work in Winnipeg. This is where my, my office is, here in Winnipeg. But I do business with people in BC, people in Calgary, people in wherever it happens to be, in different, all over through across Canada. It does, uh, it does not make a difference where the business is. It it's, depends on where the individual is. Most of it's out west, because I'm out west here, so majority of it is in the west. Um, there do, does, um, opportunities do come out in other areas of the country, but most of it's out west. And uh, it's a beautiful, especially a lot of it's in BC, different areas in BC. So uh, uh, you're looking at a better, you know, nice climate and things like that when you're in BC. It's a lot, a lot different when it comes to uh, weather than it is here in Winnipeg. Um, so uh, that's one thing. Um, next thing, what to expect. So if you came to me and said, I'm interested in looking at getting into business, I go to uh, individuals I know and I say, do you have any businesses open, uh, opportunities up? And uh, give me uh, ideas what you have. They'll tell me what's available. And I'll bring that back to you. Sometimes there's lots of them. Sometimes there's minimal. And right now, because of the way things are, they are getting eaten up so fast. People are just loving this and that so they're really taking advantage of this program so what they'll do is they'll say okay we have these is available and i will come back to you and i will say okay we have these businesses available any of those interest you it also tells they'll also tell me what the investment capital is and if it, it comes to that and i say okay good enough and you say i want to do look at this business here i'll say okay i request a information sheet and um, they will do a letter of uh, intent um, of that you're going to purchase this. They'll tell you, outline what your requirements are. They'll say uh, you need this much of a down payment uh, so that they can take you seriously. And if you're built, uh, buying a, a company that say it's um, $65,000 by other chance, they may come back and say they need a down payment of $20,000 Canadian or 25,000 to prove that you are serious about this business. And then we start the process. They will start doing all the things that are required. We will get, I get the information from you, what they need, and then the process starts from there. The LMIA is submitted once I have all the paperwork from the company. So that can take, it It can be as little as a week, it can be a couple months. Uh, usually it's like hopefully done within two months. And then I do the LMIA up and I send that out to the Canadian government for approval. Now your money is always safe that's the one thing you've got to you've got to remember with these companies if they are um looking at bringing you here or whatever the, it's just a down payment to show that uh good faith if something happens that you're not approved for an lmia for one reason or another there may be some things in your background that you haven't disclosed and you always have to be honest about it because if you don't Immigration will find it, and they will not approve your LMIA. And even worse than that, if they did approve your MLA, and you're here, and then you find your permanent residency, and they find something, you hid something in the future, they'll deny your permanent residency, and you don't want that to happen. So um, that's how it works. And so just remember, if this is something that interests you, send me a message. You can send me a, like I'm on WhatsApp. My, my business number is, uh, for anybody overseas, is plus one, two oh four three 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 zero seven four four. That's my business number. That will get me into my business, but it's also my WhatsApp number. So I do a lot of business through WhatsApp and it's easier. It's a lot more cost efficient for people overseas. It's everybody uses it. Um, I can also always be available on what's on Skype as well if you require it that way. But initially best if you have WhatsApp, let's use WhatsApp because that is most cost effective for you. 
And um, uh, so, anyways, I just wanted to go over that and be, feel free to contact me at ghimmigrationservices.ca. Um, Remember, services is SVCS, so it's ghimmigrationsvcs.ca, and my email is ghimmigrationservices at gmail.com. If you just go to my website, you can send me a message through there. This is on Instagram. You can send me a message through Instagram as well, and it is on uh, YouTube as well. You can post a message for me, and I will get back to you as well. So anyways, I uh, hope this is... There might be some people out there that int as, as interest and you want more information about it, please contact me and I will be happy to talk to you about this further. Anyways, have yourself a great day. Stay safe and protect yourself from the virus and your family as well. God bless.